free booty building program right here. None are more comprehensive, none are more well-researched, and none are more customizable. Checkmate booty building influencers. That's right, today I'm just giving away what is easily the ultimate booty building glute workout program online. Don't believe me? Try honestly saying that ish again after you've watched the video. I dare you. Also, stay tuned to the very end of the video. There is an amazing free surprise for all of you who actually watch until then. You are not going to want to miss it. Why am I doing this? Well, because some men aren't looking for anything logical like money. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, that's about right. And without further ado, let's do this. First, let's meet our vi- eh, I mean, clients. Yeah, to demonstrate. Give them a hand, everyone. I hope they're ready for what's coming. So how do we start? For the warm-up, we can look to a 2013 study done in the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy stating that, if the goal of rehabilitation is to preferentially activate the gluteal muscles while minimizing TFL activation, then the clam, sidestep, unilateral bridge, and both quadruped hip extension exercises would appear to be the most appropriate. This gives us a number of warm-up activation options that would be beneficial since, for the most part, increasing activation of the TFL would not help us and would only hinder most of you athletes out there since, based on client experience, I'm pretty damn sure you don't stretch your TFL or IT band all that often. This warm-up will be important for the sake of mobilizing the hip joints and preparing the glutes for the exercise. This should lead to better performance during the exercise, which is backed by some data seen in a 2017 article published in BMJ Open Sport and Exercise Medicine. While studying 17 professional rugby players doing high hang pull as a form of gluteal activation before explosive exercises, they interestingly found that, quote, the mean peak EMG activity of the gluteus maximus was significantly lower following the activation warm-up as compared with the control. End quote. And concluded that the quote, study suggested that a gluteal activation warm up may facilitate recruitment of the gluteal musculature by potentiating the glutes in such a way that a smaller neural drive evokes the same or greater force production during movement. This could, in turn, potentially improve movement quality. End quote. For exercise choices, the top pick was actually the step up as per a systematic review in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine published online in 2020. It found that the step up and its variants had the highest rate of activation in glutes. The rest of the exercises chosen for the workout that I've created also fall into the upper ranges of activation as per this study and another study from a 2011 review of glute muscle activation. We'll talk about that later. As for the how, we'll want to make use of a lot of different rep ranges to make sure that we're activating both the type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers sufficiently. This can be done in an undulating fashion, workout to workout, or a more progressive way. I think to start, the progressive way will work best for most, as it will be the best way to slowly build strength and ensure the safety of the athlete doing the exercises. We want to use heavy loads by the end, around 3 repetitions starting with the higher ranges around 12 to 15, with no belt and no knee wraps. Why? Quote, it was observed that several factors, including relative external load, movement velocity, level of fatigue, the mechanical complexity of the exercise, and the need for joint stabilization might directly influence glute max activation. This is as per the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine, published online in 2020, February 24th. If you're wondering how in the hell deadlift didn't make it into the workout plan, the reason for that is pretty simple. In two systematic reviews, the results didn't favor deadlift for glute activation at all. 
with one of the 2020 studies flat out stating, quote, erector spinae and quadricep muscles are more activated than gluteus maximus and bicep femoris muscles with the deadlift exercises, end quote. Electromographic Activity in Deadlift Exercise and Its Variants, a Systematic Review, published February 27th, 2020. An unbelievable conclusion, I know, but super interesting and just all around incredible when you consider how popular it is in many influencers' booty building programs. The exercises picked are backed by the studies mentioned, as well as a literature review of studies evaluating gluteus maximus and gluteus medius activation during rehabilitation exercises, physiotherapy theory, and practice from 2011. Now we tackle frequency. There is a tendency for most doing booty building programs to do multiple leg slash glute days per week. This might not be the best approach, as a 2018 systematic review by the big homie himself, Brad Schoenfeld, found that, quote, there is strong evidence that resistance training frequency does not significantly or meaningfully impact muscle hypertrophy when volume is equated. Thus, for a given training volume, individuals can choose weekly frequency per muscle group based on personal preference." End quote. So what would be the appropriate volume? In another study by, you guessed it, Schoenfeld does training to failure maximize muscle hypertrophy, he found that there was a case to be made that frequency played a role in how often failure should be reached during a set in a workout. The more frequency for the muscle being hit, the more sparingly it should be used. He also cautioned against using it when doing multi-joint exercises as they are more taxing to your neuromuscular system. So if we decide to run with a once per week system where we only hit this muscle group once, we should be okay to hit it hard and try to hit failure. This will be especially true if you've got experience doing leg exercises like these and have some experience in the gym. If not, pull back on the weight so you always have about two reps in the tank you could do if you were asked when done the reps for the set. That being said, it can be difficult to achieve the required volume, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 sets or more, according to a study titled Resistance Training Volume Enhances Muscle Hypertrophy But Not Strength in Trained Men, done in 2019. This study found that those who trained with higher volumes saw greater increases in muscle size, especially in the mid-thigh and lateral thigh. As a result, I think it's safest to work with a multiple leg day per week system to make sure we get what we're looking for here. We'll want to avoid hitting failure while still challenging the system in order to see sufficient growth and guarantee we're capable of a good workout for the second round of booty building in the week. It also seems that according to research by Schoenfeld, there are a wide range of rep ranges that can be used to facilitate hypertrophy. So we have lots of room to work with there. So what about rest times? This is another area many don't put much thought into, but the research is pretty clear about having a significant impact on both strength and size, which will be absolutely critical for this program. Based on a controlled study done in 2016 between short rests of one minute and long rests of three minutes, the three minute group showed significant increases in both size and strength after just eight short weeks where the one minute group did not. This will restrict how much we can do in say one hour, but it is worth applying given the data. As a final note on technique, make sure your pelvis is neutral for these exercises. No booty popped out back like you're twerking. Imagine your pelvis is like a glass filled to the brim with water and you're trying to keep the water from spilling out the front or the back of the glass. On to eating. So how do we eat to encourage maximal growth? According to a 2019 Frontiers in Nutrition study, being in approximately 350 to 475 calories in surplus of your total daily expenditure, or TDE for short, would put you in a good range. They also noted that, quote, so long as a minimum guidelines for macronutrient advocated for resistance training individuals are achieved, there's not appear to be any metabolic or functional benefit to the source of the energy surplus, end quote. As far as those guidelines are concerned, we know what that should be for protein. 
we're looking at 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Fats should be about 30% of your diet and the rest should be carbs. So feel free to play with that how you will based on how your body reacts to the dietary protocols. As far as timing your protein, this has generally been proven to be unneeded, as per a 2013 study from the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, which stated, quote, with respect to hypertrophy, total protein intake was the strongest predictor of ES magnitude. These results refute the commonly held belief that the timing of protein intake in and around training sessions is critical to muscular adaptations and indicate that consuming adequate protein in combination with resistance exercise is the key factor for maximizing muscle protein accretion." End quote. Don't feel the need to ramp up to this amount of food right away. You can slowly work your way up to it, which should give you the ability to gauge its effect as the weeks progress. I suggest calculating out what this would mean in terms of each macro and the total caloric intake, then figuring out the difference in calories from where you are to where you should be and working way up to it by about 150 to 200 calories per week, depending on the gap. Ideally, it would be best to arrive at the target amount in about six weeks. This basically brings us to the end of the program. So what does the final program for the exercises look like? Well, as someone who favors the multi-day approach, two glute sessions per week would be my ideal scenario. And it would look like this. The next question some of you might have is, what if I want to do this program, but for some reason, I only want to do glute exercises one day per week. In that case, take the long stance split squat from the second day, add it to the first glute day as the last exercise and continue with the other days as you'd like, either designing your own upper body days around it or using mine, but adding another push day and another pull day while ignoring the push pull day. You have the extra time for it, might as well make good use of it. As for the intensity, step up your intensity to failure for leg day. Now that you'll be doing it for only one day per week, the literature shows a bit of a preference towards pushing yourself to failure since you now have more time for the muscles to rest. That means leg day intensity goes from 75 to 80% of your maximum weight for those reps to 100%, meaning you should barely make it to the last rep if you do so at all. Just make sure that the last rep is clean. No dirty reps here, not in my program. But what if you just wanted to keep doing this style of programming forever and never stop? I wouldn't suggest that. Not completely anyways. Progressive overload is great to keep things moving, but some sort of change after this 21 week program would be ideal. Side note, off script, you guys only got the first six weeks. The rest of this program, if you're interested, stay tuned to the end. And that can come by way of the switch out exercises I prepared. Each of these exercises is an optimal choice to replace an exercise or progress the difficulty of an exercise as far as the research on glute activation goes. Here's a list of switch out exercises I'd suggest. This one took a lot of work and research, so I'd appreciate if you guys would share it with anybody and everybody you know who would like, want, or need this video. And thank you in advance to all of you who do. I appreciate it so much and it means a lot to me. But I'm not done yet. I have that special surprise I was talking about at the beginning of the video. For the first 100 of you to comment below this video, DM me on any of my social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube, wherever. I'll put the links in the description below the video, and I will send you the program to get you to the fattest booty possible in 21 weeks for free. And I'm still not done yet. The first 200 people to comment below this video will automatically be entered into a raffle and I will choose one of you at random to be coached through this 21 week program one on one with me personally for free.
Now, depending on how all of this goes, I intend on starting that actual training process in January. But I don't have that many subs here on YouTube, so we're going to see how much the algorithm likes this video and just sort of go from there. The last possible day to enter into this raffle is going to be either when we hit 200 commenters or it'll be December 24th. So Christmas Eve, mark those calendars. All the references for this one, and there are a lot of them, can be found in the description below the video. So go ahead and check those out along with my social media links, which I'll also leave down there for you guys. Remember to like the video, subscribe and hit the bell so you can become a star in our little galaxy. And of course, stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace. Oh, and before I forget, some of you out there might be wondering how I can give away something so spectacular for free. For those of you who are asking yourself that question or a question like it, I have a question for you. If I can do this and just give it away for free, can you fathom what I can do with a motivated paying client in a one-on-one -on -one scenario? Yeah. Rewind that last part back, just keep playing it until you get the picture.